Hi, I'm going to discuss a scientific method for choosing successful baby names and where um, you should raise a child. So this was part of a paper, um, Mining Wikipedia for Characteristics of Notable Individuals, that was published in ICWSM. So choosing a baby name is one of the first decisions for a parent, and there are plenty of books out there about how to choose baby names. Another thing that parents are often faced with is where to raise your child. Um, and so you can see articles of, you know, the best places to raise your family. There's a lot of interest in this in sociology and psychology to find what impacts uh, the success of a child. Um, and these sociological factors, if you know what they are, then maybe you could promote them and then encourage children to be um, to make more of an impact on society. So surveys have found that family income, neighborhood, and first names impact success. Um, other things that can matter are also whether parents are divorced or um, stay married or whether um, or also their education. So these studies have looked at what features might impact a person's success, but the limitations of these studies is that it's limited in size due to budget. And often they ask what is success by, um, by surveying people, and it's biased um, because of self-reporting. People are more likely to say they're successful than they really are, for example. So I'm going to propose another way to identify successful characteristics, and that's looking at Wikipedia. And Wikipedia is one of um, is a large online encyclopedia, and right here is an example of an entry in Wikipedia of Elvis Presley, who is a famous successful person. So the idea is to use Wikipedia to find characteristics of success. Wikipedia contains over 500,000 notable or famous individuals with information on a person's life. So they're looking for people that are noteworthy, that is, that they are cited, that they have, um, that newspapers have mentioned them, or that they're mentioned in TV. So the idea is to mine Wikipedia for characteristics associated with notability, fame, or success. And because it's on an online encyclopedia, you can get a lot of data faster and less expensive than surveys. Okay, so the way we do this is by looking at the enrichment of characteristics in Wikipedia. If you look at the U.S. population, for example, and let's say half of the U.S. population have a certain characteristic, and then you look in Wikipedia and you see that half also have that characteristic. So you compare the frequencies of um, that characteristic in the U.S. population with that of the Wikipedia population, and this we define as the relative risk. So the relative risk is the frequency of a characteristic in Wikipedia divided by the frequency of the characteristic in U.S. And if they're the same, then the relative risk is 1, and you say there's no difference. Now let's say, however, we observe that in Wikipedia there's actually um, a higher percentage of the characteristic in Wikipedia. So in this example, the characteristic is still observed in half of the U.S. population, but in Wikipedia, it's observed in three-quarters of the population. Then the frequency in Wikipedia is higher than it is in the U.S., and so the ratio is greater than one, and it's enriched in Wikipedia. This is the thing that we're calculating, relative risk that um, I'm going to use the symbol RR. So if relative risk is equal to 1, that means there's no difference in Wikipedia. If relative risk is greater than 1, that means that there's an enrichment in Wikipedia and this characteristic is associated with notability. And if the relative risk is less than 1, that, that, then that means that it's decreased. Where do we get these frequencies? For the US population, uh, we're, for names, we're going to be getting it from the Social Security Administration, and for birth locations, we're going to get it from the U.S. Census. For Wiki, from Wikipedia, we're going to get it from 40,000 American biographies, um, and then we were able to get birth locations for 35,000 biographies. Okay, so we're looking at names and birth locations, and what we first see is that common names are underrepresented in Wikipedia. So we're looking at names that are frequent at more than 1% in the population. So these are the common names like Michael and James, for example. 
And what you see, what you would expect is that if um, a common name makes no difference, you would expect your relative risk equal to 1. Instead, you see that relative risk is less than 1, um, which implies that having a common name is ad disadvantageous. And if you have a common name, you're less likely to appear in Wikipedia. So we looked into this in more detail, and we see that while Michael appears in Wikipedia less than expected, the nickname Mike is nine times more likely to appear. So nicknames appear more often in Wikipedia than expected instead of longer formal names. Men with nicknames appear in Wikipedia 2.4 times more often than expected, while for females it's a 1.3-fold increase. So, for example, Bill Gates, you'll, um, you know, the, in, the entry in Wikipedia is Bill Gates, but he was born as William, but he's referred to as Bill. Um, and then Steve Jobs was born as Stephen, but he's referred to as Steve, and his Wikipedia entry, he's called Steve. So the, the theory behind this is that when you have a nickname, you're more familiar and approachable, and maybe that you're more likely to be a leader. What this means is that if you want to name your child with a common name, then um, then while the child is uh, growing up, um, you might want to adopt a nickname. Okay, so um, in the next stuff, what we, in the next analysis, we just combine nicknames with the formal names in order to clarify that uh, contribution. And what we see now is we're looking at rare names. So rare names are less than 0.01%. And you see if you have a rare name that is less than 0.01% in the population, you are about 2.5-fold more likely to appear in Wikipedia than expected. And even if you have a name with frequency between 0.01 to 0.1%, you are enriched. Um, to appear in Wikipedia it's because these values are greater than 1. So um, this trend is seen for both entertainers and athletes. Obviously Elvis is a rare name, but even athletes where you expect it to be skill-based, we see this trend where rare names matter for athletes. So where, how can you get these frequencies? You can go to the Social Security Administration and they list the percentage for baby names. Go to this website you select the tab popular names by birth year and you set the birth year and then you set it to top 1000 and then you get the percentages and then that way you can um, see the percentages of all the birth names and if you want to decide to choose a baby with a choose a name that is rare you can um, just look at the percentages and choose a rare name okay um, so this idea that a rare name increases the likelihood of notability or success has actually been shown before. Um, in a 1980 paper in the Journal of Social Psychology, someone, uh, Zweigenhoff, looked at Who's Who, and um, Who's Who is a printed book of Who's Famous, and he had an odds ratio of 3.6 for rare names. So rare names had an odds ratio of 3.6 to be uh, in Who's Who. And so in our study, we're looking at Wikipedia rather than Who's Who, and our odds ratio is 2.49. So um, these actually names these sorry these numbers are actually very similar. 3.6 is similar to 2.49 because of uh, the numbers that are looked at. So Zweigenhoff looked at 30 noteworthy influential persons in the study, which is why his confidence interval is so large here and ranges from 1.5 to 8.5 whereas we're looking at over 30,000 notable persons. And then so, um, because we have so many individuals we're looking at, our confidence interval is very small. And you can see that the confidence, or in, um, that this lies within this confidence or interval. So that means that um, the work that um, is, the result that we see, observe in Wikipedia is also confirmed by past work. Okay, so um, do you want to use who's who versus Wikipedia? Uh, who's Who includes influential and noteworthy people, but it's um, it's subjective criteria, um, whereas Wikipedia includes notable, which is cited by newspaper articles, but, it, but these individuals can be infamous. So in Wikipedia, you can have criminals. Um, who contributes to these databases? Who's Who um, is, is uh, populated by in-house research staff that decides who goes into Who's Who, 
where its Wikipedia is crowdsourced, in Who's Who self-nomination is possible while Wikipedia discourages it, and Who's Who gets its funding by selling plaques, books, etc. to the people who are listed in Who's Who, whereas Wikipedia is nonprofit. So the reputation of Who's Who is actually as a vanity press because they do sell these things. Um, but on the other hand, Wikipedia can have erroneous entries. So both have their dis advantages and disadvantages. One quote from Forbes magazine is, the point of Who's Who is not to read it, but to be in it. Who's Who in America also appears to contain a lot of relatively unaccomplished people who simply nominated themselves. All right, so we, um, so I just talked about the analysis of Wikipedia on birth names, and now I'm going to talk about the same analysis we did for birth states, seeing which birth state where you're born in would you increase your likelihood of, of being in Wikipedia. So we divide it into different categories. We first looked at entertainers, and we see that California and New York are actually very highly enriched for entertainers. And that's not very surprising because California has Hollywood and New York has Broadway. Then we looked at athletes and you can see that actually a lot of the southern states, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, and to a lesser degree Alabama, are enriched to produce uh, successful athletes compared to the other states. And I, what I've, um, I put baseballs on the top 10 states. Okay, so the take-home message is, is that we can use Wikipedia to identify sociologically important characteristics, and we validated that for names and birth states. Um, and the results are that nicknames and rare names are enriched in Wikipedia, and that might guide your choices for choosing baby names. And certain states show enrichment for athleticism and entertainment. So one caution is correlation does not imply causation. Although we've seen these results, Parents that give their children unique names may regard their children as special and have a certain upbringing that would encourage them to be uh, successful in the future. Um, moving to Hollywood or New York doesn't guarantee you'll become a star. It may be that people who are born there um, are children of parents who are already in the entertainment industry, for example, and they have connections that just because you move there, you wouldn't have. So just because we see this it does not mean um, it's necessarily a guarantee.